unto me, and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. From Jeremiah 33, third verse. Hidden and fenced in, amplified. That's what amplified says. When it says hidden and fenced in, I'm Reverend Bob Butler from Agape and Praise Fellowship, and you're Kendall Hedrick from Last Adam Ministries. Yes, I am. And this is our half hour program. We'd get kind of a rut and forget to tell people who we are. I don't think last program we did. Uh, we may not have. We may not have. You'll just have to guess. At who are those dudes up there doing that? We haven't heard of them before. Probably never have. We're not looking for that kind of notoriety. But if you watch to the end of the program, the credits are there. Yes, the that's, credits. That's why I watch some of the programs that my wife is watching. And I'll, well, I'll watch them to, to get to the end to see who's playing a certain role. Oh, yeah. But in, in our case, Bob's playing Bob and I'm playing me because we can't get anybody <laughs> better looking to come play us. Uh, there is no other. <laughs> I don't have a twin or a triplet or any of that stuff. Although my brother found somebody in Tulsa, Oklahoma that looked just like me on a side profile. Well, uh, I had a fellow years ago that was riding a train, and uh, he said the fellow was sitting in a seat or two ahead of him, and he said, I was just sure it was you. And he said, I was half mad at you because you hadn't spoke to me. And he, <laughs> he said, uh, I was I was going to reach up and thump you on the back of the head. And he said, then I realized that it wasn't you. <laughs> After uh, he thumped you. <laughs> I said, no, no, it was, fortunately it was before. Um, or, or he might, might have had, you know. I might have let him get away with it, but uh, the other guy probably would, <laughs> wouldn't have. Anyway. Oh, well. Um, Here hey, we are. Anyway, welcome to, to that program, Great and Mighty Things. And uh, we are, we're, we're, we're dealing again with where we are spiritually in Christ, what our role is as a spiritual being in Christ, and how we're to walk out that role, and, and how to make it, as, as Bob said in these, these last programs, we're endeavoring to make it practical in, in how does the word work in my life, how do I make it work, what, do, what does it say, and then how do I bring that into play in my life experience and grow by that. I got two comments now. One I want to back up for just a minute. I mentioned hidden and fenced in in Jeremiah. Yes, you, uh, you know, you and I know what that means, but if you just say, call on me, I'll answer you. And great mighty things, and I'll show you the things you don't know. But, but we insert in there from the amplified, hidden and fenced in. Now, you and I both know the answer to that, but for the people out there, what is the hidden and fenced-in things that's going to be revealed? Now, in one of our half-hour programs not too long ago, we talked about the mysteries that are hidden in the Word mm -hmm. for the believers. That could be part of the hidden and fenced-in things. They're hidden and fenced-in from everybody else or the world, but they're not hidden and fenced-in. And Jerry used to always say, it's hidden and fenced in, but not for us. And he's right, because the mysteries that are hidden and fenced in are for your benefit as a Christian, as a believer. Okay. They're hidden for us and not from us. Exactly. Exactly. Now, we're talking about your brand new Christianity. Maybe you're not brand new. Maybe, maybe you've been a Christian for a long time. But if I asked you, name two of the six doctrines of Christ listed in transitionatorial justification, you would really get, you'd really go off the deep end and say, I don't know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. They'd say, what's transitionatorial justification? <laughs> yeah, they'd say, well, <laughs> here's the author. He's got to tell you. <laughs> well, it comes from Hebrews 5 and 6. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did a teaching some time back at a church up in, around Iowa City about the six doctrines of Christ. And uh, I asked the question to the people in the congregation at the time. I said, how many of you can recite or know about at least half of them? Mm -hmm. And I didn't see very many hands go up because a lot of them were reaching for their Bibles. What are the six doctrines of Christ? I never heard of that before. Mm -hmm. and, and I guess I'm bringing this up because when God says, I want you to teach those people watching you how to live as a better Christian, one of the fundamental things you should know and know what they're all about and how, to, how they apply in your life are the six doctrines of Christ. Mm -hmm. So transition story justification, it behooves us, it behooves, 
it behooves us to know that. Uh, if, if it is, and, 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 and it is because it says in Scripture uh, that these are the first principles of the doctrines of, of Christ. Christ. Uh, so uh, we probably ought, if we're going to progress on, we probably ought to know the first principle. You better know the foundation. Uh, it, their if, foundation. If, if you want to play baseball or basketball or football or, or, or golf. Board, board get golf, uh, <laughs> if, if you want to play chess or you want to play checkers or you want to play Monopoly or you want to play Any whatever game. else, you need to know at least what the, what the goal of the game is. Yeah. And, and that's kind of what, 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 what this is dealing with. The, and the and, and it would probably behoove you to know what the rules are. To know what the rules are. <laughs> uh, uh, as I was thinking, we were, we were taping, maybe it was in the last program, I think, uh, and we were talking about you know, different things, uh, the devil trapping us and, yes. and things like that. Working on us. Um, and we were talking about those kind of things. And, and I was thinking, way back when I played football, uh, during one of our practices, uh, well, actually during several of our practices, uh, we, we used to have a guy that, was, that, that played on it, and, and he, was, he was great uh, at, at what to call a crackback block. You know, when, when you're coming from the other side of the line, and you're, you're coming across him. And, and he was, you, you'd come through that line, and, and I mean, next thing you knew, you didn't have any feet under you, and you were... Flat on the ground. Down on the ground, you know. <laughs> and uh, one of the coaches um, told me, he said, when you come through that line and nobody has blocked you, watch out. There's a reason. <laughs> uh, and, and the reason was, was Dan was coming across, uh, not this Dan, not our cameraman Dan, <laughs> but, but, but this other Dan was coming across and he was just about to, to plow you down. Uh, and, and, and so... We, we need if, if we know some of these first principles, some of these basics, yes. it can stop us from getting derailed in, in our Christian premature walk. Uh, right, and, and, and <coughs> it, it'll stop you from getting cut off at the ankles, and, and it's not a pretty thing, you know. Uh, but and, and actually, you and I probably could give you a list of Christians that have had that happen. Right, I, I, with all of them, I can I can go back. I, I could actually probably go back now. I, I don't know what would have been about 1974, I guess, or 75, the first time I dealt with transitionatory justification, and, and I could probably go back in about everybody's life that was there that first uh, out of that first group of people that I dealt with of young people that were college and high school age, and and I could go back and find where they have fallen in, in one of these first principles mm -hmm. because um, generally that it, it's generally where we lose it is in the basics. Mm -hmm. um, exactly. You know, um, and, and that's true in sports because a lot of times you hear those coaches after the game go say, well, we're going back to this and start working on it. That's right. And it's a fundamental. That's you know, how do, how do I tackle the guys running full speed down alongside of me if I don't know how? That's right. You can't bump him out of bounds necessarily because he may be stronger than you. Uh, sometimes that, yeah. He may be going faster than it, you. It doesn't always. Some people have that technique, but but it is rare. Uh, the basic foundational principle works for everybody All every time. All the time. Yep. And, That's a big difference. And then once you understand that, once you understand those basics, then you can go beyond that and say, well, uh, okay, uh, th this this will work. Uh, it's just, it, it's a little bit like uh, the, uh, all of the new digital cameras have got a, a little green button somewhere on there, and you put it on that green button, and everything's auto. And, and it will give you a good picture, uh, just almost consistently, because of the way that it's programmed to, to, to do it. But there are times when you want to do it differently but if you don't know what the principles of uh, exposure are, then you won't know how to change it and make it work a different way. The same thing is true with this. The, this if, if we have got the basics down, then the Spirit of God can come to us and say, okay, just try this. Well, I've never done that that way. Well, but, you know, and this is where, well, again, one of the basics of the principles is to learn to know when God's speaking to you. <laughs> Great, uh, I mean, one. Now that's not one of them in, in, in uh, Hebrews 6, 
but but that's a very. <coughs> well, well, let me let me go back and lay the groundwork to where we're coming from. Okay. Chapter 5, verse 10 says, Called of God as a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Well, we know that's Jesus he's talking about there. Mm -hmm. Of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, hard to utter, seeing you are dull of hearing. Now he's talking, okay, up here he says uh, about being a Christian, being made perfect and all this. And if you've been one for a while, of whom you have many things to say, hard to dull of hearing for when you... For when the time you ought to be teachers. In other words, this person's been a Christian for a while. Right. He's not just fresh off the boat. You have need that one teach you again. Again. Well, you should have heard it the first time. You should have made it revelation knowledge back then. Because if you're going to use that as a foundational, how many times when you play football did your coach say, well, you better go back and memorize this foundational truth first. Mm -hmm. Or you get your head knocked off. <laughs> or, or you come back to the sideline and he swapped you upside the helmet and said, you got to block or you got to <laughs> tackle, you know, whatever. Don't you know? <laughs> okay, should have known that again. And they have to teach you again to be the first principles of the oracles of God. This mm -hmm. is the first principles, first principles of the oracles of God. You got to know what they are. And become such as have need of milk. Oh, I want my milk, mommy. And not a strong meat. You take that T-bone, get it out of here. It's not ready for that yet. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. There's one of the things that we should have. It's basic is righteousness. Well, That's what's true. righteousness? I can come boldly to the throne room of God and talk to my heavenly father, and I know he hears me. Uh -huh. You are a baby. You're still eating meat. You still need milk. And I like your definition of milk for them. They can't have the T-bone steak because they're not, they're no teeth. <laughs> the devil says, ah, I can gum them to death. There uh, be strong meat belonging to them that are of full age, even those by reason of, by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. This is just giant, not super giant. Okay, I give you that. <laughs> Leaving, therefore, the principles of the, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ. Leaving them. Well, what you were starting to talk about is we need to get to the point where we've got them so we can leave them. You yeah. don't have to go back and keep repeating them over and over and over because I know what they are. I have them. They're, I, I operate in them mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. You call the transition toward justification for a very good reason. It's transforming you from being a baby Christian always needing somebody to give you a pablum. Like it says in the end days, they want teachers with itching ears so they can get all their, get feel nice and bubbly when they leave church, even though it did them no good. I mean, not being nasty. Uh, you're meddling there, yeah. <laughs> Let's go on into perfection. Not laying again the foundation. He even said foundation of, mm -hmm. of repentance from dead works. Repentance of dead works. That's number one. And from dead works. Mm -hmm. And faith towards God. Of the doctrine of, now this is a good one. Baptisms. Mm -hmm. Baptisms, plural. Yeah. Explain to me about baptisms when I heard, I get baptized when I get born again. That's, that's it. I have one baptism. One faith. Well, depending upon their translation out there, it might say ceremony of cleansing. <laughs> yeah. We, 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 tend to, we, tend to, we, we tend to be analog or old school or King James. <laughs> or all three. <laughs> now, that doesn't mean that we don't, that we don't use other translations because we, we do. We do. My library has several commentary Bibles. Now, people say, what's a commentary Bible? Well, the guy that wrote the Bible, it's his commentary. And he may not believe everything in there like you believe when you read King James or some of the other versions. Mm -hmm. But he will explain to you generally why he why believes. He, yeah. Why he believes what he does. Why believes. he believes what he does. Uh, and why he wrote that Bible. He wants to sell them. Yeah, well, uh, and <laughs> because he wants, like we do, we, he wants to transmit what he knows and believes to other people so that they can use that. That's, and, and probably 99% of the time he's right. Right. 
or maybe it's close to that, but uh, okay, we'll give them that. But the, uh, you know, um, I, I've never written one out because I started one time going through the book of Ephesians and I thought, well, goodness gracious, I'm, I'm spending more time explaining this than <laughs> Paul did when he wrote it. I, I'm not helping any, uh, you know. And, My uh, book will be too big. <laughs> They need to spend their time in the Bible and not in my book. Yeah. You know. Uh, but don't say that about our book. <laughs> because if they'll spend the time in the Bible, um, you'll learn it just like we did. You know, because you, you have a teacher, which is the Holy Spirit, uh, just as, as we did. And, and he can, now that's not to say that you can't learn from other people. Uh, you need to learn from other people. You need to be hanging around people that have these first principles in, in their life. Uh, if you're playing, uh, if you're playing whatever game that you are that you're playing with, consistently with people that have no skill, you won't develop. You can't develop as well as mm -hmm. you can if you play against somebody that you can't consistently beat all the time. Now, uh, you don't want to get beat all the time either. <laughs> but uh, it, it is important to you and to me to hang around with people that have faith, that know and understand the Bible, and, and can, can prompt you or, or provoke you to, to look or to see or to do some things, because there's, uh, there's much more in here than we will ever get on our own That's right. in our lifetimes. Well, somebody else has studied out a particular segment. Mm -hmm. uh, He's going to save you a lot of time. Sure. Because he's going to teach you all the study that he did, if he did it correctly, and most times they do because they're sincere in what they're trying to develop. It saves you a lot of time. You can learn revelation knowledge from all the work he did mm -hmm. and boost you up higher, faster, than if you had to go study it out for yourself. There's sure. three last ones. One, this laying on of hands, which is one of the doctrines. Yep. This is one that's fairly big in the Pentecostal faith. Yeah, or, uh, Spirit filled, charismatic, Word. whatever yeah. title you want to put on it. And a resurrection from the dead. Now, that's a basic one. Mm -hmm. and, and that's, uh, if they've been around us, listening to us for very long, they've heard us elaborate on that. Mm -hmm. Rec resurrection from the dead. And the big one, faith towards God. Faith is the catalyst that makes the word work. Without and you can't say I'm without faith because God says I've given to every man the measure of faith. Mm -hmm. And another verse says you can't. Let's see uh, how does this go now? I got to stop and think. I threw it out there real quick. Uh, the one about uh, without faith it's impossible to please God. Mm -hmm. But you can't say I don't have any faith, so I can't please Him. He's given you some. Mm -hmm. Use it. <laughs> okay, there they are. And you started in on elaborating on these. Uh, which, which is good, but I thought we better go back and, and add a little more foundation of who he's talked to. Mm -hmm. He's not just talking to you as a brand new Christian. He's talking to anybody that's been a Christian, like that group I has, er, alluded to earlier, this congregation where a, a lot of them were, were running for their Bible to see what the six doctrines were, mm -hmm. to rel even, even acknowledge that they knew one or two of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, uh, here again, uh, I caught myself in that trap once. <laughs> we will, we will progress. Hopefully, we will grow and progress to the place where we won't be doing as many dead works to repent from. As we as we grow and we progress, we, we should we should do do less in ten, fifteen, twenty years of the Christian experience than we did in the first six months or five months or however long it was, but we may still have to deal with that. Now, what, what it's talking about here, that repentance from dead works, nekros ergon, when you look at it in the Greek, and, and, and it's something that is not going toward the right goal, basically. Yeah. You know, uh, going back to our sports analogy, uh, if, if you've got the ball and you're running down the field and the other team is not trying to stop you, but your team is trying to stop you, you may want to see if you're headed for the right goal. You may have been spun around. <laughs> uh, That's happened. And, and, and this is kind of, this is one of the connotations of that dead works. Mm -hmm. Is it really progressing toward 
the right goal, uh, w w no matter what area of spiritual action it is, is it really going to get me to where, when I have arrived, where I'm headed, uh, will it be progressive? Yep. Uh, will I be farther ahead than I was when I did? We, we spend a lot of time doing things which, oh, well, let's put it this way. We spend a lot of time praying for things that we've already been given. Exactly. You know, uh, you're talking about faith, uh, and, and God has given us faith. Uh, but we, we uh, you know, and I know a lot of people that are always, oh, God, give me faith. Well, he's not going to just pull your head open and dump it in. No. Uh, actually, it dumps in your heart. I, anyway. I, wish, I wish sometimes he did it that way. Now, now there, <laughs> there, there is a gift of the Spirit, yeah. which is faith yes. yes which which is is described the best way that i've ever heard it described is as as somebody just pulls the plug and all your doubt runs out and and, and it fills back up with faith and and there's no you you don't have any there's not even a thought that it's not going to work yeah. kind of thing now i I've, I've i've had a couple of situations in my life and I, and i know um from from talking to some other people where they've actually stepped over into that. And it's a whole different thing than our believing by our faith, our, our God-given, natural, Human spiritually faith. developed natural faith. faith. Uh, it, when, when, when God dumps that in there, it, they, they ain't nothing going to stop it. That's, that's the big difference between operating in his faith and putting on the armor of God, you know, his shield of faith to quench all the fiery darts of the devil. Mm -hmm. Well, are you not quenching the fiery darts of the devil? And maybe you don't have the uh, level of operating his faith, which maybe you're still operating in your natural faith more than you are God's faith. And, and we have a right to both of them. <laughs> because you got this little shield, you know, it just, it, it may just cover your- Those boxing uh, gloves yeah, too tight. <laughs> yeah, it may just cover your hand and, and not, your, not your whole body. Um, yeah. Uh, because we have not developed that- In our lives. In, 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 in prayer. Yeah. And in action, and, and in, in, in studying the Word, uh, or in praying. Well, just recently, like within the last couple of years, the Lord rattled my cage, and He said, you've been operating too much in your natural faith than the faith that I gave you to operate in, than my faith. He says, he said, my armor, put, put my armor on. He said, you used to operate in my faith when you had my armor. Well, I was conscious of the fact that I had His armor on. Mm-hmm. I was conscious of the fact that I was operating his faith. And his faith will bring results. My faith will always bring results. Mm -hmm. He also shared with me that natural faith is not for spiritual things. It's for your natural life where you live. If I go out there and get my car, my natural faith says, well, when I put the key in and start it, it's going to run. Mm -hmm. Or if I sit in a chair, it's not going to fall flat on, put my, on the bottom on the floor. Mm -hmm. It's going to hold me up. Well... Natural education operates in natural faith. When I went to school, I was learning natural laws, physics, mathematics, all these things that are based on. Somebody else figured it out, but here, this always works. Yes. Natural faith. I can use that every time, but that's not God's faith. It, every, okay, let's back up. I heard somebody make a statement one time. He says, well, all faith is God's faith. Well, that's true, but he segregated these things. As you as a human being, and any human being, has natural faith. You get it as a baby. You grow up in it. You grow your life up. Jesus did it until he was 12 years old. But he, had to, he was different than we are in the sense that he knew who he was entirely. So he knew there was a coming up time in his life that he was going to have to start operating everything he was doing with God's faith. Mm -hmm. And his father's faith, let's put it that way, and not his own faith. Because he could have. He's the one that could have, where we can't because we're not him. But now we can because we have both faith. We have both natural faith and we have God's faith. Now, and, and God was sharing with me, he says, you have slipped back and I'm trying to do things with your natural faith that just don't work. So what do you do? You get into these foundational things and change. Mm -hmm. You know, in Romans he says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. Well, which kind? Actually, both. Both the whole way around. Um, again, we 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 can. We don't have to. <laughs> we don't have to experience uh, some painful experiences to learn 
to learn the lesson. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, we may, <coughs> and, and when you have learned it that way, you will retain it sometimes much better. Your, your revelation knowledge comes fast. <laughs> right. But, but you, you don't have to, uh, you don't always have to make the mistake. You can learn from somebody else's. Sure. In, in the natural and, and in the spiritual. The spiritual. And this is why you want to hang around with people that are spiritually that, minded, that are making it work. Yeah, uh, Romans eight. <laughs> uh, so several, several of the financial teachers. Uh, oh, there's a bunch of them, uh, and, and there are a bunch of them. And and how did they learn? Dave Ramsey is one of them that I'm thinking yeah, of. Yeah, he's time. a big one. Uh, Dave Ramsey said, "When I he said I'd lost a bunch of money, you know, <laughs> went broke several times." But he said, when I wanted to learn about it, I went to people that were making it work. Yeah. I went to the millionaires and, and multimillionaires and said, how are you living? And how are you, how are you making this work? Well, the same thing is true in the spiritual realm. Find somebody that's making it work. Find somebody whose life is working, that is praying for the sick, and, and, and they get well. Find somebody that is, is doing whatever it is that you feel that you need to do and making it work. Uh, it, it works in the natural as well. I had a couple of fellas that, that got a hold of me. Uh, they wanted to learn blacksmithing. And so they came and they said, we want to learn. Well, <coughs> they, they, they listened to me. And, I, and I, show them, I show them how to do something. And I say, okay, now do it. And then when, it, when, when it's going a little left or right from where they should be going, I say, well, try this or try that. You're, you're holding this wrong, or you're doing that wrong, or, or, or be, and then after you've done it, now the same thing is true, and, and should be being done in our churches. Our, 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 the leadership of our churches should be letting people get their hands on. Yes. And, and, and do the prayer. Now, I, you know, when somebody comes, I want to, I want to get my hands on them. I want to pray for them, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, having them uh, have, having a younger person uh, in, in, in things pray, knowing that we're there to to back them up. They won't get in over their head, and, and I'll, I'll reach in and, and drag them out. You know, kind of. Uh, and, I, and I've used this a lot of times. Lead this person to the Lord. Yes, I can do it, but you need to do it so that you can get to where you're. Uh, if you get in over your head, I'm here. I'll, I'll bail you out. And there's a terrific gratification for that. There, because because you learn, you learn, you experience it differently. You learn the lesson, but but uh, we, we we had and I know we're running out of time. Here, we had a young fellow back here back in the seventies, and and he'd read the book on how to ride motocross, and and he come down on his motorcycle and he'd read the book, uh, and and he, <laughs> he 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 did a couple of jumps and and he ended up uh, in the hospital because he because he'd only read the book. He had not been on the motorcycle trying it. You know, you, you, progress, you, you progress to these places, you know. Uh, and, and it's the same thing. We, we need to let people experience that flow of the anointing so that they can understand it when, when, when they get back into it and, go, and, and work with it later. Exactly. And... Uh, I was thinking about several things when you were talking about that. Some examples. When I was a kid, uh, I've got just part of a minute left. I, I learned a lesson in the natural real fast. My mom, she used to make uh, waffles. And she had a waffle iron. Well, the waffle iron was chrome coated, plated. And I was a little kid, and I come walking up there, and she'd been making waffles. Thing was hot. Yeah. She said, "Now, Bobby, don't touch that." Well, you know, when you tell a kid, "Don't do something," they're going to try you. So I went there and I touch that thing. And I drew my hands back real fast. He said, you burnt your fingers, didn't you? And yeah, they were all red. Every one of them got burnt. I learned from one lesson. You don't touch a hot waffle iron. Yeah. Well, it's the same thing carries over into the God's walk. And we're running out of time fast. Amen. So I'm not going to give you a minute to end this.